Other news from overseas. The need for some sort of solution to end the long and brutal war in Syria was made clear once again this weekend because new pictures show a situation both difficult to watch and equally impossible to ignore. We get our report tonight from our chief foreign affairs correspondent, Andrea Mitchell. He appears to be only five, perhaps six years old. He cries, my brothers died, my brothers, my brothers. The dust from the regime's helicopter bombing still on his eyelashes, mixing with his tears. It is one of many YouTube videos this weekend, impossible to verify, but UN officials say telling a story of incalculable horror. In homes, people are starving, what the UN and U.S. call a war crime. But the bombing continues. Barrel bombs drop from helicopters, despite a U.N.-brokered ceasefire. Evacuees say only a trickle of food is getting through. This man says we were eating leftover wheat, the stuff we used to throw out before, anything to just keep us alive. As the Syrian people cry for help, peace talks collapse this weekend. The video that has been sent out by opposition and rebel groups how can the administration ignore this? Number one, the president is committed as, as his legacy to the middle class, not the Middle East. The middle class in America? Yes. He's risk-averse, not risk-ready. That's driven largely by the two longest, longest and among the least prof, profitable wars in American history. So the president's looking at 100,000 people killed, these horrific images, the refugees and so on, and looking for answers. But the country wants him to be focused on the economy. But fighters like these men in homes are overwhelmed, fighting on two fronts, against radical rebel groups aligned with al-Qaeda and against Assad's air power backed up by ground forces from Iran. And today, the rebel military leader, General Idris, was forced out. None of us want boots on the ground, but, uh, but to not revisit other options which are viable, then I think uh, is the only thing that we can do. This is shameful. A humanitarian disaster for all the world to see. A top official traveling with President Obama is blaming Vladimir Putin for the tragedy in Syria, saying Russia can't say it wants a peaceful approach at a happy Olympics, while it also supports a regime that kills people in the most brutal way. Brian? Andrea Mitchell in our D.C. newsroom tonight. Andrea, thanks.